Hello everyone and welcome back to another brand new episode of Career Mode. Now today we are off to Assen and after that we have our summer break which is our market window for next season. Now after the domination in the last couple of rounds I've decided to put the difficulty up to 100%. I've seen recently after the latest patch that the AI have been nerfed so they're a little slow in areas so I put up to 100%. Uh, it might be changed again midway through the weekend if it's too low. I reckon maybe need to put up to 120 but I don't want to go up so far to the point where i'm like last by three seconds again because that just won't be any fun so try to balance it we'll see judging after probably qualifying where we're at we'll probably make a decision in whether 100 is right for now but we're going to jump straight in now to the tc of Assen. so at the end of free practice i'm down in p11 0.4 off just under half a second the AI on track are completely broken at this track, it appears. Through the fast section at the back, they're just weaving left to right, they don't know where the track goes. Uh, all these lap times they've done are clearly just simulated, they're not a real lap time, so... Um, my plan of changing, depending on how quick they are. It looks like the pace is about right. Um, I'm a tenth slower than my teammate, so you're kind of on course. But in the race, I'm afraid that it could be all fall to pieces so we're gonna to have to stick with it for now i'm gonna see what it's like in qualifying i go from there again i'm gonna to stick to the plan like i said but i reckon it might be to no avail so here in q2 absolutely saturated track it was wet for q1 as well unfortunately I had to go through it but just about top the session but in the rain i must admit the bike feels terrible i have very little feeling compared to how i felt at Magello when the bike felt very good in the wet conditions around here it does not i have zero Rear entry grip, I have zero front end feeling, I have so much understeer, the bike doesn't stop, you can see I'm having lots of these moments, so not really confident to see really what the lap time is going to be in these conditions, but we're going to push on anyway and see what we can do. So once again, Milestone has completely screwed me over, I was 2.8 seconds on pole, as you can clearly see in the background it's still heavy rain, and we've ended up in P10, a second off of Pedro Costa, so simulated times again are just... Uh, ruining the game mode unfortunately so we're going to start on the fourth row at the Dutch GT now it's going to be a lot harder coming from that part of the track as the first sector is very tight all the way up until you basically get up to high speed out of the um, turn 5, turn 6 you really don't get up to any speed there so it's going to be difficult to make any sort of start against these crazy AI but it's, uh, it is what it is unfortunately the game has screwed me over once again but what can you do so I've gone with a medium front software, pretty much what I always go with. Um, so far though, everyone I've seen has gone with a hard tire bar from me and Algear with a double soft, same as Sam Lowe's. So it looks like the harder tire, so we should slightly have an advantage, which is the hope. So hopefully on the opening few laps I can just make a bit of a break and see can I make a few positions because I do need to get towards the front. I'd like to have a good race before the summer break. There's something magical about racing at Assen. The crowd is ready, the riders are ready, we're ready, and in a few moments, we'll see the start of the Dutch Grand Prix. Here we go. Five red lights. And we are away, and we just get a ton of wheel spin for no reason, even though we have the soft tyre in. They seem very, very afraid of the apex there massively they seem very casual down to turn one thankfully we have some dry weather for the race as i did not have much confidence in the wet i was barely making any apexes not that i'll be any better in the dry but definitely improve the chances of me going forward all over the inside carb there so our p8s are actually after making promising start for once Podium, of course, today is the goal, really. I'd imagine the front two, Acosta and Arbelino, will make a break, considering they have free track. But it looks like we have a lot of corner speed as normal. Again, look at the lines there on us. Chantra out into the car park. He just cuts back then. I believe as well, this corner, they're going to go very wide and they cut straight back on me. So I could easily go up the inside, but look the way they cut to the inside, that's just wrong. And then they go wide. That's Dixon. And they go for it in there, that's probably illegal. 
It looks like again though the difficulty is wrong. We're gonna ride around the outside of our lane. No we're not. The bike just stopped turning mid-corner, you love it really. And the bike doesn't turn on the right, so we're going straight on into the chicane. Lost a lot of positions. AI's weird lines again, we're down the middle of the track this time. They break earlier than me and release the brake and then brake again. So they're all over the track here in Aston. So it's going to be a bit of a minefield to pick my way through about this moment in time. I just want some clear track really, but the AI are not leaving me have it. So the mid corner speed is just non existent. That is P3. I was going to say there for a second, it looked like a Costa was making a break. It looks like through the high speed stuff myself and I've been have taken a couple of tenths back on him. Around the outside, if we're going to release the brake and turn it in, nicely done. I'm not going to attack him in here, even though he's going to go wide. I'm going to be patient and attack him in the second bit like this. But while we're back, he's going to have a weird line. Oh, we nearly collided with our Bellino, and that was into the lead. I've already gapped him, so. I don't know what Miles done to this game, but the AI are just idiots. <laughs> they were idiots all along, now they're just slow idiots, so. Looks like it's going to be another easy 25 points for me. Whoa! What the hell happened there? Right, we've just blown our two and a half second lead. That was so weird. Back nearly down to where we qualified, and that's given a cost a nice lead. And I probably have the pace to get back there with plenty of laps, so no rush, but that is very unneeded and very strange. Must have been back to first gear, but I've been doing that all all weekend in there, don't know why that happened. It's one of those things with the physics of this game, they just do things randomly like that and they don't add up. The inconsistencies really ruined the the experience for me. Look at that, like how we went to battle these guys. That's another couple of positions back. Oh, and charges leans on me. Thank you. Back and forth, here we go. We hold P8. So. Comfortable 25 points around the table there, and I've kind of thrown them away. It's not going to be comfortable now because I have to be in and around these AI again. And the easy could be a crash coming with this, like, I have so little faith and trust to race with them. Should be a rain, it's done. Hello, Jake, how are you? It just turns across when you like to see it. So again, I'm going to have to go for the, the dangerous patient 9 tree and maximize the noise. He's going to cut right across my nose, though. Roll it back, hopefully nobody goes for the inside. They're gonna come back. It's just so hard to pass when they're doing that. Hopefully though, through the high speed stuff, I have a big advantage in terms of knowledge and speed. That is P5. I had a chance at the front three re really bunched up. I think I was pulling a cost along. The bike is not turning again. Stupid physics. What is he doing? Slides with me on the straight. Oh my, that should be a Gordon. Maybe Canada in a lunge. Looks like it's done as well. Unless he's going to cut back underneath us. No, oh, he's going for the wide line. We're going to have an inside look in here on Acosta. Oh, let's pick it up there because it just didn't turn on the braking again. You can't. Turn the bike while trying to break in this game, it's such an annoying little gremlin of the physics. Whoa, we missed the gear shift there. It's been a messy race so far, I feel like I really should be winning this one comfortably and I'm just making a big job of it as we go up again the inside of the canopy. Just contact every bloody corner on every lap. Let's me up again. And we've been smashed into by one of the Hondasia bikes, that's Ayagora. What was he doing? I have completely lost the plot on this one. 
cost in our are literally riding as one rider and getting dragged into their silly racing lines now as well. Oh, Agora. Completely. Give me. Oh, where is Acosta going? Give me no confidence. Was Arbolino? One of them just went straight on through there. I'm gonna keep a flat stick. Acosta is on my way now, though. We're having a massive wobble moment mid corner. I'm off the break already. He's going to turn across me. We've collided. Arbolino's down. I cannot believe this race is going like this. He just turned straight across me. I didn't even break that early, or break that late, I should say, in just massive contact. What a silly game this is turning out to be. Oh, Candid's gone straight on, and he's done the exact same thing. What in the name of God? I just went straight on, tried to take full lean through the gravel. We were just having to get back to P3, and I took a very cautious through the chicane as... Well, every lap I come in there, I try and get hard on the brakes and the bike just stops responding to my input, so... Just a really massive flaw with the, the physics in this game. We go for another dive, but we're going to go wide shortly, he'll be up the inside. There he goes. But again, another rider who's after crashing. Now it's Chantra, who's in P3. We really seem to get to the front of this field again and start pulling away if I can. It's such a weird race so far, and I just want to get ahead of Acosta. And pull away. I'm gonna go for it here, mate. Around the outside. To the rusk and the hook. And we should have that one done now, unless he comes back at us. I'm gonna push hard now. We have a bit of a gap already. You can see just when you look back, they're in just the wrong part of the track most of the time. Is it dead giveaway that they're doing something wrong in, in the corners? Get in there though when I'm leading. The corner ran off at a while ago. Jeez, I'm t I am literally taking the A's line now and I'm on the grass. They've taken my riding and they've just put it in the bin. I need a couple of smooth laps now where I can just try to get back into my own rhythm. Oh, Acosta and Chantra both down out of P2. Looks like they probably collided or both went wide. That puts Ayagora up. Chantra's crashed again. Iagora and Dixon on the podium. Quite like real life, actually. But we're on lap 9. About to start lap 10 here in a second. We have 7.7 .7 seconds. We've just really pulled the pin over the last couple of laps. Shows what happens when you take the actual racing line around this track. You go so much quicker than the eye. Um, to be honest, I'm not really sure what we're going to do with the series going forward. As the riding is not enjoyable. The career mode is quite dull the AI are broken and uh, yeah so it's gonna be a bit of a weird one I don't really know what way to go about playing this in the future really because like the AI's pace today I can't really judge them on their pace in terms of strength on the AI's difficulty because they've been just taking the wrong race and ever so they're never gonna be quick so I don't really know what to do in that sense so we're gonna probably keep the AI difficulty the same for the next one I might put it up to 105 or 110 and just see what that does for their overall pace because they beat me in practice, they beat me in qualifying, but now in the race I am nine and a half seconds in the lead and I probably could get 20, 25 seconds ahead if I pushed from the start. But uh, they were just so glitchy and bouncing around that I couldn't get to the front easily. But we've done it now and we are quite convincingly going to come home with another 25 points. Iagora has now crashed. So, again, not only are they taking the wrong waistline and they're slow, they are crashing out of every single place. So, yeah, it's a bit of a weird one, really, this one. Now, Dixon has crashed. <laughs> Literally, anyone who gets to P2 is crashing. Lead is up to 17 seconds almost. By the line, I reckon it's going to be in the 20s because I reckon they're not done yet. We're on our personal best lap of the race as we're coming around to start the final lap of this race. Now, I cannot get over. It's up to 18 seconds already. I don't know why they keep losing so much time. I'd love to know where they're crashing because they weren't really crashing when I was with them a while ago. So, 36-1. 
on Friday practice that would only probably put me about 10th which is uh, showing how badly they've dropped off in the race last lap now we have our 20 seconds the goal was to get 10 when I got to the lead and we've done double that with all our crashing so yeah it's been another weird little episode I must say unfortunately not really any decent battles the battles that we did have were kind of just glitched and awkward and a bit lumpy really there were a lot of contact looks like Albert Arena is going to take P2 I must say probably shouldn't say it but for me the Halligar has been in P3 for quite a bit of the race so I don't want to jinx him I feel like with everyone crashing he's still managed to hold P3 for the whole second half of this race Into the final chicane we come. Still can't get feeling through the bike through there. It's 21.7. It's going to be 22 any second. There we go. 22 seconds across the line. Milestone fixture AI, please. Let's take a look at the final classification of this Moto2 race. The riders are enjoying a well-deserved lap of honour. And we'll soon be joining them in Park Ferme for the usual post-race interview. So zero points for Tony Arbelino. That will mean I will double my championship lead from 25 to 50 points. So now we have two wins over everyone. Acosta remains third, 61 points behind. I have one hand in championship already. I know I have a long way left, but realistically, if I just keep putting myself top five, top six, if they keep making mistakes like they did today, I reckon it'll be uh, without, without too long will be my championship, but uh, on the right track, we slightly bridged maybe a bit more of a gap over I think it was 18 points last time out so Rebel KTM IO jump back into P2 20 points over them in the team's championship but that is not our main objective who blessed us with a perfect race today in addition to the victory this young man scored some very important points for the world standing So our reputation goes up again, extra development, so it looks like we are going to be taking the lead of the Calyx. Ooh, here we go, choose your path. So stay in current category, move to a higher category next season. Let's see what they have. Happen. I chose to go to the higher category game. Why are you showing me my bike again? Please don't glitch out and put me back in a Motor 2 bike for next year. Um, what the fuck? What is wrong with this game? I am convinced I... I am fabricasted, really. I do not know what has happened. I have to watch back the recording, but I know for a fact I selected that I wanted to move up. Now, maybe... Maybe is that what's meant to happen? Is it just meant to be like, okay, well, he wants to move up next year. He doesn't want to stay in this category. Um, but surely, yeah, we're all being slightly new. Wait a minute, writer and team. How do I go look at new teams? Um, there is no really way of doing it. Adok, that's only other writers. Bike development. What the hell? Surely I should be able to see other teams. Right, I'm going to end the episode there. Um, if I've screwed up on my end, I'll probably put another little bit at the end of the episode to kind of confirm if I've done it or not, but I'm going to have to go look at the editing and see what the recording shows, but I'm fairly sure I selected that I wanted to move up, and that surely would have brought the new teams that were looking at me instead of just leaving me stuck in this shitty team, so I'm even more annoyed now than usual with this game because it might have been my issue, but I'm fairly sure it was on what, what said that I wanted to move up to a new team, so... But end there. I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. If you did, drop a like, subscribe to see more, and catch y'all in a future video. Thank you all for watching. See you soon.